Hey guys, so I handed my entire sales process over to ChatGPT's new agent for 160 hours straight. And I have to say, it was a really interesting experiment to make in relation to the current stage of AI models for business use, and also in relation to Agentic AI as a whole. So I'm really excited to share that with you today. By the end of the video, you have a much better understanding of how the agent can be used in everyday business operations, and if it can even replace these custom automations built on no or low code platforms, such as the ones that you see over here. I'll tell you what I was able to test and then walk through each of these automations here individually, showing their real results, as well as the prompts for the ones that did work, which I'll leave in the description for you for free to replicate this yourself. Now, what you need to know is that we went through a top to bottom of the funnel approach here, showing different steps for automation in the sales pipeline. And what we're going to get started with is this top of funnel area here, which it was the prospecting agent. So this is a document full of the entire test that I ran for the agent here. And what you need to know is that for this first test, we were looking for an agent that was going to be able to do the scraping for us. And so this is the finalized prompt over here. But originally I had a slightly different prompt, which I'll, sh which I'll show you in this chat that I uh, shared over here. Now you can see that compared to that last one, this one looks a lot different. And so this was the original test. I said, you're going to prospect 100 leads from my agency, search Google Maps to find the prospects, visit the website and find the decision maker, and then update the Google Sheet. And then I left the Google Sheet over here. By the way, as a side note, if you are updating Google Sheets at all for ChatGPT's uh, agent, you need to just make it publicly accessible and then give it the link. It's a lot easier than it using the connectors using Google Drive. But that's what I did over here. I was going to include a criteria and um, in this I was looking for uh, the context of who we look for, who we are right now, and then also like quantity of people and that sort of thing. And so it started, right? And then the first output that it went through, so this is kind of the replay. I kind of like this feature from the new agent. Now, originally it did a pretty good job just going through Google search and then, you know, as you would manually scraping these websites and local um, people, um, I did say that it could use Google Maps. It didn't think that it was like the best uh, way to do it or way to go about it. So it was just scrolling through companies and then it was just um, had the task of uh, inputting all the information to that Google sheet that you see here. Now it did that for about 10 people and then it told me this. So I said, I tried to access um, this company here and there was a security filter. And so this was something that I kind of put, should have put in the prompt to say, if you encounter any securities, you should have just skipped past. So this is where I said, okay, well, this is a bit interesting. And then I said to continue. And then instead of input outputting everything back into the Google sheet or updating it, it just gave me everything back into the chat itself, which I didn't really like. Now, what's really important with this is, as you can see, it was a, a lot of iteration so it was a back and forth process that I had to get it right with and then the prompt that you see over here is pretty much what I think will make it as autopilot as possible but or originally this was horrible right so it was just outputting th stuff in the chat and then when I did say uh, you only use the connector to try and do this or access the link directly because it was publicly available for the chat to access. The result of this was only 10 people again. And I'm pretty sure it was just using the exact same ones that it outputted over here to update the Google Sheet. So it wasn't even reworking to get more leads. It was just transferring over um, very, very slowly. So it took 10 minutes just to add the ones that were um, in the chat into the um, Google Sheet to update. And so that was really slow for 10 minutes. And I eventually found out that the Google Drive connector doesn't actually allow you to update the Google Sheet, which is why it's good that you have the um, publicly available link for your Google Sheet for the agent to go and access. So that was one thing that I hit. And then the other massive roadblock is that when it said, I can keep gathering more leads with decision makers and all the contact info, but populating 100 rows manually may not be feasible in a reasonable time frame. An alternative to this would be to complete pile it into a separate CSV and then it would share it with me. So this is actually a massive roadblock if you already have information in a Google Sheet that you'd like to update. In this case, obviously I didn't. But the best thing that the agent can do is it just can create a separate file and then share it with you. And so with that being said, this is the finalized prompt with all of these limitations kind of solved. It says that you're a B2B lead generation assistant. Based on the criteria below, I need 100 qualified leads output it into a CSV file, which as I said, it's going to share it with us. This is where you can put all the criteria stuff. And then for each lead, I ask it to return the business name, website, founder name, email, and all of this other information here, including the link, the URL. 
and this is a lot more feasible for the agent and it works a lot better so as you can see at first it didn't work but this one kind of resolves all the roadblocks that I encountered in my original um, back to back conversation with the agent which it took ages and even at the end here I said okay I need the list and then it just wasn't compiling the list it said it just kept saying I'll proceed to gather the data and I said okay we, you can start and then it just wouldn't start so I guess from the point you have a very clear prompt to begin with you make a job a whole lot easier and this is the best prompt that I could find I was researched online as well and then tried it out on um, my business partner's computer because I'd already hit my limit on here and then he had good results with prospecting as well but then what I wanted to compare this to was essentially the AI automation version of this so if you haven't seen me run the scenario over here then I can link the video of me using it live up there for you to watch but if you have seen it then you know that this simple scenario is responsible for all of this output over here so thousands and thousands of people who scraped and personalized with individual personalized lines about their employee past and past jobs and stuff um, all into one list for us to go and contact through LinkedIn through email their contact information is all over here um, so as you can see this doesn't even compare to the agent version of it because it's just thousands upon thousands of people um, if you're interested then we use Appify and Apollo for that stuff I'll, again the video is up there for you to watch but essentially it's just not even comparable to what AI automation can do in that sense so if we come over here and then get rid of this initial phase here so the prospecting and scraping part of that I'll just give it a big fat cross because I would always be using my own individual automations as opposed to this ChatGPT agent version of it not that it's bad it's just that the AI automation version of it is a lot more advanced but anyway moving on to the second one what we're doing is kind of a middle of the funnel thing for our LinkedIn um, outreach so this is the, the very specific to the use case of our LinkedIn invites and that is the natural second step following on from the prospecting phase where we're just getting contact information so it's this section over here of the funnel okay so what we can do is go back into our document over here and then check out that ChatGPT chat as you can see this is the exact same prompt that I ran that I put into the document for you because this is probably the best use case for ChatGPT agent just straight up repetitive and simple tasks that it'll take ages for you to do and then ChatGPT agent can just take however long it takes for itself but essentially this is what it says the role that we gave it was that it is an expert lead follow-up agent from the information that we already have from the prospecting phase so we've already scraped the LinkedIn information now we are sending the invite request from the CRM and we gave it a very specific situation because we wanted to see how it would check from the CRM. I'll show you the CRM in a second but to pretty much see who needs an invite request and who doesn't and there was a mix of both within this variation here and obviously we can only send 50 requests a day on LinkedIn and so we gave it these rows to work with and the specifics was to access the Google Sheets, review the leads that it needed to contact via their first name, access the LinkedIn and then you just send, send it without a personalized message so that was the notes over here and then we just said we only do 50 at a time and then we will re-trigger re you the next day um, to do it again. As we already know this is a kind of invalid because it can't use the connectors to access it via API but obviously it did a good job I'll just show you the replay over here just some highlights as you can see this is the CRM here full of a whole bunch of contact information exactly the same as the one that I just showed you before that we use for the AI automation scraping and it just goes through the the rows finds the people that it needs to contact uh, clicks the hyperlink and if we just fast forward over here it goes very quickly in between the CRM so the Google Sheets to LinkedIn to message back to the Google Sheets and we'll just see how it goes step by step we can see the thoughts of it it's another feature that I actually love about this but it is very rapid fire and then it just goes through all of these leads manually going for the hyperlink to the LinkedIn page sending the invite request and then coming back for more and so if we skip we can see that it took 55 minutes for 50 people checked which is pretty good honestly it's around one per minute which is the the same length that it would take for a human um, if you notice the operator technology of it is the most advanced in the market so it's not that slow and especially for these sort of like one two three step processes what we did here is we tried to trick it because out of a whole bunch of these people some of them did need an invite request and some of them had already been um, invited okay so what it said is that it completed 28 invitations with several leads skipped due to existing pending invita invitations or requiring email addresses although it did run out of the allotted time which are apparently a 55 minutes in this case um, it still managed to see and decide not to send a, a duplicate invite request or anything else along with the already existing invite request because the prompt was really clear as you can see and then the agent was obviously smart enough to go through the 
this kind of three-step process over and over and over again, which would take us manually ages to do. Now, in regards to the whole invitation side of things, I have made an entire system here and even a video outlining the system that uh, reaches out to these people, scrapes them a lot of money per month, and it, they charge for the time that you use their scrapers or their phantoms. And based on performance, cost, consistency, and overall the quality of the system, ChatGPT agent is a lot more reliable because this system has a lot more components to it and we rely on a separate software which is phantom buster that actually costs so much money to run and then you know this can all be automated by this simple prompt over here that i just showed you which does make this quite incredible and going over here i would probably give this a big tick so this is a prompt that I will definitely be using again in the future as soon as I get more runs on my ChatGPT account. Now this last one was probably the, by far the funnest one to test and it was following up messages on LinkedIn again. So it's very similar to this use case but with a bit more complexity to it. So let me just show you that prompt over here. So scrolling down to the LinkedIn follow-up agent. So we really needed this because after we send that initial invite and even the first message, which is a voice note from um, my business partner, Donica, then we have to keep almost nurturing these people in some way. So this actually applies to a whole bunch of other areas of sales that we just applied it to LinkedIn in this very case. And all that we did is we took this database of people to follow up with. And then based on the day that they were getting followed up in, we just personalized the approach to give them a message or send something funny to actually get them to reply. And so this is something that we're seeing a lot of success with. And over time, I think this will be perfect nail on to just streamline entirely across our own process at Blue Horizon. So this is a prompt over here saying, you're an expert lead follow-up agent who has a knack for being organized, precise, and excellent at following SOPs consistently. And the job here, as I just said, is to follow up with a list of LinkedIn leads from our CRM to send a specific message with the follow-up number as displayed in the table. So in this Google sheet here, we can go to this tab here, which is a whole bunch of dummy data, but it is very similar to the CRM that we did use. And all that we are doing over here is follow the instructions that are on the number. So the day that we are following them up with, and then just going back into the Google sheet and updating it. So it follows kind of the same procedure as before, but the complexity here comes in this point here. So we are only contacting the ones from the second day. So the second DM sent, because the first one, as I said, is a voice note. And so we had to make sure that the AI knew to distinguish between the two. And I even put a note here to say, you will only contact the leads if the status of the first DM is yes. So saying, yes, we have sent it and therefore it is valid for you to send the follow-up message and so then it would look at the header in a2 which is the message text and then the header of message image which is a3 to then generate the image that is attached with that message so what i mean by that is for each of these follow-up messages we can either just have this simple text here to send or we can have a bit of a text along with a prompt for the agent to generate an image and send it to the prospect so this was a huge opportunity that we saw to use this and honestly the results are pretty interesting Interesting, I'll show you that in a minute. So this is where I say generate an image if, if the prompt for the message image cell exists. And so that's this over here. So if this is filled in the designated day to follow up with them, then we generate that image um, using the image generator. And then we access the LinkedIn, go to the hyperlink and whatever, and then we send the message and then update the Google Sheets from that point. And so these were the results. So the only thing here is it asked for permission to send the first message. And I just said, don't ask me to reply again. Yes, just send the message. And then it works through my LinkedIn, sends the messages. I did this with a test body and you can see that it very quickly goes from the test batch of people to contact. And then we can just see that the agent just sent a message and very quickly it is able to transition from this to sending the message to back into the Google Sheet in a second. And then just like that, it comes into this test batch of people to contact and then it updates the CRM accordingly. So we did that a couple of times and these are just some of the results here. So I sent it to my business partner as part of the test batch as well. And for some reason, the agent actually did a kissing emoji along with the arrow emoji to the follow up with the, um, with the lead. And then we even joked around here saying that the agent did it for a pattern interrupt as well. But then this is the aspect of it, uh, generating the image using the image generated tool and then saying, I'm just waiting for Donka to reply. And then it does that across a couple of different things. This was a test that we did to see if it would be able to copy the image from the cell itself instead of generating an image. But we thought, you know, just let's generate the image itself because it's very personalized. The, the person can probably tell that you use GPT image generator, which makes it a lot more 
one to one personalized and they they think oh they actually took the time to send me this image and that is what i really really like about this even though it's not consistent it is something that we can definitely be working with in the future so this is more of the results that i got and then my business partner donica got these following results over here and now we are using a proper you know list of leads for them to contact because we saw that okay this works um we might as well try, try it with the live batch and you can see here it, it's taking steps now to update the people after it's contacted them again it uses the hyperlink when it goes into the message it identifies the button relatively quickly via the operator and for some reason the interface glitched over here but the agent can still tell uh, where the message box is and then it sends the designated message for it to send so the, for this first one we didn't need any image generated and it does that pretty well actually no for this one for some reason it sent it you know a couple of times um because of this glitch in the operator i'm not sure if this is something that opening i have been working on but again it's just other factors beyond the prompt itself that the agent comes up with and there's no resolution to them right now which is why these solutions can be very prospective and like potential potentially be used in the future but as of right now it's just not as consistent i'll show you an example here in a second where it just fully messes up so fast forwarding to the end here it did update us with the specific people that it messaged but based on the crm and we saw the messages that it was meant to send it didn't actually generate the images for those people and so again it does come back to that consistency aspect of it where the idea is really cool and the use case is really powerful but if it can't consistently deliver based on like interruptions that we see either the operator or the prompt if you slightly tweak it to your use case then it's just not as reliable for live production yet but overall like you this is a very valid solution and it definitely saved my business partner hours because usually he has to do that manually with the amount of leads that he has coming in and so i'd give this like a yellow circle so kind of like a maybe because in the future like when it doesn't prove and we do get this right um i do see ourselves using this so this is probably like the best use case by far for all of them and it was really fun testing this one out in particular and in terms of an AI automation that's probably the other point that I got really excited about because there is nothing like that right now in the market. There's something that only ChatGPT itself could make because it's generating personalized images in real time. And, you know, if you try to automate that with a system um, using, you know, Phantom Buster, as I said before, or the image generator API, it could cost you a lot of money to run that. And if it does exist, it's definitely really expensive right now. And um, this system here is going to soon wipe all of these kind of possibilities in these systems out like really quick but that is essentially it for the video today as mentioned before i've linked a whole bunch of stuff so all the prompts that have worked up until now and i've walked you through today are into that google doc for you to access i've also linked down the crms that we have used to um, communicate with the agent and for the agent to update so you can access that and replicate it all yourself other than that i hope that you do have a better understanding of how this agent can be applied to business cases and that you know that it's not the end of the world right now that we still have a bit of time and there's still things to improve in these amazing models that are coming up now this is just gpt5 that is launched as well i'll try to make a video on that shortly but other than that i hope you find this helpful and i'll see you in the next one